Today we're having a look at the Luminado, which I've called the ill-fated Luminado for reasons which will become clear later. So Dimitri at Magic Tail Electronics sent me the Luminado for a review quite some time ago. Um, it's a clock which is worth a closer look because the time and the effort that Dimitri put into building it, um, it's clearly a labour of love, but ultimately that's become its downfall. So you can't buy one of these. You won't be able to buy one of these. There's only a few that were made. Um, and I got one of them because, well, it looked like a great little clock. Um, the basic problem was that Dimitri just couldn't get the price down enough to be able to build them and market them at a price which would be interesting for people to buy. So when we look a little bit through the, the hardware later on, you'll see that it's got basically everything. Um, and it just has a certain price to be able to build it. It's all surface mount, which we'll, which we'll see later. And um, I paid $150 for this one, which was kind of cost price. And to be able to deal with all of the support and the returns and uh, shipping and... Uh, administration and all the rest of it you are going to have to look at a price of well nearly three hundred dollars each um, and although it's a beautiful clock it's probably not going to sell for three hundred dollars so i had to get my uh i had to wait a while to get my hands on one for review it came from australia um, and dimitri had to build it before sending it to me um, and when it came it arrived in a small box well packed and protected and um, when I unwrapped it, I found this guy inside. So you can see there's a VFD, um, there's a VFD display behind there, uh, an enclosed one. There's a um, a sound uh, buzzer here. There's an LED. There's an infrared sensor. There's an LDR. So you're already getting the a little bit the the feel of it. It's kind of full of sensors, and when you turn it around. Well, we really go over the top here. So there's all sorts of sensors here. There's a, um, a temperature sensor. There's an ICSP port, so for programming it. There's a big USB, a little USB. There's a power socket on the side. And uh, there's an extra I2C port here. And um, what's that other one? I can't even make out what it is. Serial, there's a serial port there as well. So there's, you can see there's a lot going on in this clock. Um, another feature which I particularly like is up here you can see there's a passive infrared sensor. And that means, well, you, you can walk out of the room and it will turn off to, to preserve the display. And when you come back in, it will just turn back on again as if by magic. So all in all, a very nice clock um, with a 3D printed case. So also here, you can see there's, there's a few little errors, probably from the way I put it back together again. Um, but you can see it's a lot of effort went into this. And if you look on the site at Magic Tail um, Electronics, the website, and there's a link to it in the in the um, article that comes with this, you'll see there's a kind of um, stream of consciousness, which uh, Dimitri did. Um, it's very, very, very detailed, all the way that he came up with the various ideas and so forth. Um, and um, you can kind of follow his thinking there. But this is clearly a labour of love. So let's have a look at this clock in action. Uh, let me steal a power supply from another clock um, which you can see up here so there's one of mine and uh, another one a mill clock at the back there but I'm gonna steal the 12 volt supply from this one and plug it in to the power port on the side so it's uh, if you notice there'll be a little flash on the LEDs as I plug it in whoops there we go little flash and then things will start happening around the front. One of the things I particularly like is that you can set everything with um, 
with a normal remote control. I've got an old remote control from an old television here. And you just press the buttons which you want it to be programmed. So I'm going to say left, right, up, down, and I'm going to press the menu button for settings. So there we go. And now um, it's remembered the date and the time because I was playing with the clock uh, a while ago. It knows the date and the time, but if I want to set it, then I can just press, um, let's, I'll zoom out so you can see on the remote control, I just press the menu button in a way that you can understand. Okay, and then the LED changes, I can set the alarm. So let's set it to 20, press the right button, 51. Ooh, that was wrong. Uh, 52, let's set it to 52. Okay. Set the alarm on. Alarm on. Okay. I don't want to set the time, so I'll just whiz through this. Okay, and it will now go back to normal time settings and then we can see the the alarm going off. So all settable via remote control. Uh, you'll notice there's no buttons on here at all. It's all done via any infrared remote control you like. So it's very, very straightforward. So 2051, a couple of minutes to go or so before the alarm goes off. Oh, 52. There we go. Don't know how to turn it off. Let's see if we can find that out. <laughs> Don't know how to turn it off at all. Don't know. Shake it. Press something on the remote control. Oh, have to hold the remote control the right, right way around, and then maybe something will happen. No. Maybe it will stop beeping when it gets to 53. Of course, it appears that the software is also um, not quite finished yet. Um, it's all on GitHub, as I mentioned. Okay, so there we go. It beeps for a minute, no matter what you do. Um, but that's, of course, changeable in software. So anyway, that was the uh, the Luminado, which you can't buy. Um, and if you could buy it, it would be very expensive. Um, I, um, it's a shame. It's a shame that it isn't um, cheaper and it's a shame that it isn't being made because it's really a lovely piece of work. Just sometimes economics wins. <laughs>